the money that you spend and that you have is a reflection of the work that you've already done, right? It's a reflection of your, of your time and your effort and your energy put forward. So what we're going to see in the scripture here is that even though there's not some huge focus on your money and what you do, it, it, you know, the Bible definitely talks a lot about helping other saints and helping other churches and, and people who are in need and especially being able to support missionaries and support men of God and doing the work that they're doing. Um, and, the, the, you know, there's a lot of things I want to say. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Let's just start here in Philippians chapter 4. Jump down to verse number 14. I want to focus on this part of the passage first because... There's, there's so much to this. You know, where, where you put your money and where you invest, um, it makes you more into that. It makes you, you care a lot more about it, right? When, when you're, the, the more you, and it's not just money. When you, you know, when you invest more time, when you invest just, just more of yourself, whether it be through money, whether it be through time, you know, through your thoughts, through, you know, through everything else, the more invested you're going to be in those things. And you're going to care a lot more about them. And, you know, with the prayer challenge, the more you, you actually pray for other people, the more you're going to care about those people and be thinking about those people and then want to know, hey, what's going on with these people? I've been praying for them as opposed to just you see it once and then you don't think about it ever again. Right. Well, it's similar with what you do with your finances, with your resources. How am I going to spend this? Now, obviously, everyone needs to spend some on on you know, yourself, on your family, you know, supplying your needs, you know, getting food and clothing and, and, and that type of thing. But also, you know, maybe, hopefully you have other money to give as well. Now, uh, everyone's in different situations financially, and the Bible talks about that as well. We're going to see the scripture that talk about, you know, those uh, that can or cannot uh, give or supply, right? Now, everyone, and I'm just going to, I don't have anything on tithing in here at all, but uh, just so you know where we stand as a church, I 100% completely believe and, and uh, can prove that, that tithing is biblical even in the New Testament. That we are under the order of, even though we're not under the Levitical order, we're under the order of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek received tithes of Abraham and he received tithes of Levi being yet in the loins of his father. And, you know, the Bible teaches that over and over again. He received tithes. The tithe belongs to the Lord anyways. How the money was spent for the tithe was to support the Levitical priesthood. We don't have Levitical priesthood, but you know what? We still do have men of God. We still do have people dedicating their lives to serving the Lord. Now, they were offering sacrifices and serving the Lord in that manner, but they also taught the people as well, the priests and the Levites. So you have people that have a very, very, very similar job function as the Levites did, right? And they were supported you know, through that tithe, well, that hasn't changed, okay? And I'm, I'm not going to preach, re-preach or preach that sermon right now, but um, that is something that is not optional because it's God's money, okay? It's something that God demands or expects of you. But what I'm preaching about this morning, what I'll focus in on is more, would be more of a considered in the Old Testament, a free will offering, or, you know, just any type of love offering to help other people out. And, that, and that's the scripture we'll be focusing in on. And, and here's the thing, and, and just keep this in mind as we go through these passages, because some people will misuse many of these passages and start applying them to the tithe when the ones that we're going to be looking at this morning is not talking about the tithe. Because people will say, oh, you know, you, you don't have to give because God loves a cheerful giver. We're going to look at that passage as well. And they say, see, you don't have to feel compelled or anything like that. And they want to apply that to the tithe when that's not what it's talking about. Okay, so I'm not going to cover all those points because I really don't want to focus on the tithe at all any more than I just did right now. It's important for the groundwork, but going forward, I'm not. But as we go through this, make note of the passages and look them up later. If you, if you still have questions or doubts about, oh, well, the Bible says this or that about the tithe, look it up for yourself. All these passages we look up and see, is that really talking about the tithe or not? Okay, do your own study on it. And you can make note of them, get the full context later, and, and check it out for yourself.